Hey, I'm Cyclin and today I need to share with you this absolutely busted strategy. Now, by no means this is a new strategy, by no means I am the creator of it, but right now the strategy is unbelievably profitable with being almost no investment and it's just ridiculous. And if you if you want to farm any currency, maybe you want a mage blood, maybe you want a headhunter, maybe you want to farm a mirror or for the next build, this strategy is basically free currency. All right, what are we looking at? Is beast and essences with a bit of high sprinkled in if you want to. And it's, like I said, absolutely ridiculously good. So before I'm going to take a look at how, what we are running and what the results are, I guess first what are we running and then how are we running it because the how is very important to make it lucrative. So we are going to run any fast map, be it Mesa, be it Strand, be it Beach, Tropical Island, Atoll, any simple layout that you can run quickly that is somewhat reasonable price. Right now Mesa is a very expensive map because of other boss rushing strategies being popular. So you can dodge to any other map if you aren't supplying your own Mesas. And then we are going to use Essence on the map device, a Gilded Bestiary Scarab and a copy of Beast Sexton. If you also want to add Heist into the mix, which I can recommend, it is pretty profitable, assuming of course everything sells. We have a Smuggler's Cash Sexton as well. But this is all the setup needed. One to two Sextons, one Scarab, one map device and you need like 128, 127 passive points to do this properly. And once you have that, it's very simple. Now, if your build isn't that strong, you might have some issues. Because bees, especially when they also spawn on essence, can get very rippy, very dangerous, very deadly. It will require a strong build. I am currently testing out or t experimenting around with the build that would be perfect for this, but it isn't in a finished state where I can show anything. I'm just in the POB phase for now. But once this is up, I will try to get it out during next week if it works. I'm going to show you a build that likely is going to be perfect for the strategy. But that's in the future. For now. Okay, so we have the strategy. How are we going to run the map so we can actually do one minute maps? We're not going to full clear the map. We're not even going to capture all the beasts. We're going to only look for the beasts that we want. There are six beasts. Six beasts that are interesting for us that we are looking out for that we want. Then we are grabbing essences. I only grabbed shrieking and above. You could consider grabbing screaming and above essences or grabbing all essences based on the state of the league, based on how much currency you currently have. I only grabbed shrieking and already made a big amount of profit with just that. But that's for in a moment how much profit. So we are going to use remnants of corruption as well. So any essence monster that has three shrieking and six or, or six essence rewards, so a list of six rewards or three shrieking, we are going to wall. We are going to use essence of uh, the remnant of corruption to get it walled, hoping for deafening for corrupted essences or hoping for just uh, upgraded on all the essences. Alternatively, if you see like two shrieking and one screaming, you can still remnant of corrupt them if you have enough remnant of corruption that is. But that is up to you. Just those two, three shrieking or six essence rewards, those is definitely you want to corrupt them. Then if you encounter an offer, uh, a trial in your map, we are using a node, which we get to when we see the passive tree, that can offer improved rewards. We are only going to run the improved trials, the trials that give an improved reward, improved offering, and we hope for the gift of the goddess there. And then for the beasts, like I said, we're only looking for the six beasts. The beast that we are looking for is the Ferric Lynx Alpha, Ferric Wolf Alpha, Ferric Frost Helian Alpha, which are three beasts that are all of either feline or canine. So those are going to be four-legged. They're going to be, I guess, small to medium-sized beasts. And if you see anything four-legged, you want to get to that. Once you run this a bit, you're going to be get better at identifying. This will just help you getting started with identifying the beats that you want. So any four-legged is for a safety kill. Then we have the Quikic Vazel. It's an octopus or squid-like creature, but it has 
like its tentacles above the head. So if you find a squid that has its head and everything is below it, that is not the beast that you want, you want the beast that has tentacles above the head as well. Then you have the Phenomal, Phenomal Plague Arachnid, which is a big spider, which has like bubbles on the abdomen or spider butt or however that's actually called. And then we finally have the Crikey Chimera. The Crikey Chimera is a frog-like creature, so if you see anything that's jumping around in the map, that is a big bluish in the map, like a beast that has a blue hue, or a beast that is uh, frog-like again, that is something you also want to catch, because this is a big moneymaker right now, this is the one we guaranteed don't want to skip, so if anything slightly resembles it, be on the safe side and grab it. Now, because we're going to capture a lot of beasts, because we're going to get a duplicate of every beast, we're going to get a lot of beasts, which we will bring us to the one big malus, or the one big downside of the strategy, which I get to in a moment. But finally, the thing that we need to care about, smuggler cash. The last thing that if you're using it, if you're using smugglers caches in your map, you're only going to pick up rogue markers, any blueprint and only deception contracts. Any other contract you skip, you're not going to get them sold, it's not worth vendoring them, so just don't even pick them up. But this is what you want to loot, what you look out for in the map. Now, for how you're going to get the one big downside as easy as possible. The issue is the following. You're going to get a lot of beasts. Your menagerie is going to get full at some point. And if your menagerie is full, it's going to take, when you capture something of a specific cage, it's going to take something out of that cage and just deletes it. Which means that you need to clear out your menagerie about every 60, 70 maps, based on how much you kill, maybe you can get it up to 90 or 100 maps. But eventually you need to clear out your menagerie. And the best way I found to do it is I'm going to go to my options, I'm going to go to windowed screen, I'm going to minimize it as much as possible. Now if you have one screen, you can take a browser and put it like over here and put on a video to watch it. If you have two screens, you just put the browser on the second uh, screen. And then you're going to go with your... I keep forgetting to hit enter. With your small screen, you click save, you're going to open this and you're going to hover here and you spam left click and enter and you're just going to spam it and eventually while you watch your video this tab will become empty. Now before you do that of course you're not going to start with this. First you're going to use a specific string which you will find in the video description and this string is going to highlight all the beasts that you want. So it's going to highlight the Crikey Camels. It's going to highlight the Phenomal Plague Arachnid. So I can actually show it here. It's that's not a good example. Alright, I'm going to show it differently. Grabbing one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. And adding those in. Grabbing the beast cherry orbs. Alright, now you can see it. So this is with everything. And this is with the string. I see the lynx, I see the frostelian, I see the wolf. I see the Plague Arachnid, I see the Vessel, I see the Crikey Camero. So I can go in and I can just grab everything out. Again, if you have a smaller screen, it's just easier on your mouse, easier on the clicking. And once you grab everything out, then you can delete everything else. And this is the best way I found it to get, remove the downside as much as possible. Sadly, we do need the clicking. This is the one downside of this strategy. Alright, let me put those back in. And then we can finally get to the passive tree. Alright, let's take a look at the passive tree that we are going to use. So, straight up, we are going to use all essence nodes. Except these two small essence rare chance nodes. We are grabbing prolific essence down at the spot of the start. We are grabbing at the left side crystal lettuce. We are grabbing crystal resonance. We are also grabbing these two remnant of corruption nodes. Now this means that every five, one in five essences is going to be pre-corrupted. It's going to give you one of corruption. Now this will mean you're going to get less deafening and less corrupted essences. 
but you're going to have an easy time sustaining the remnants. If you just buy the remnants, you don't need these nodes. You can just skip those. But it's really nice to have it to sustain your remnants by just trading it with a slight bit of profit after we make so much anyway. And then we have amplified energies to get more deafening and more shrieking and more corrupted again. Then we're picking up a lot of heist nodes. We are picking up secret stash. We're picking up the fine art because we only want the deception contracts. And we are pick mouse, okay. And we're picking up casing the joint and no honor among thieves to get more rogue markers, as well as more smuggler caches. And finally, again, more blueprints and getting the chance for fully revealed blueprints. Now you see that I have a small heist note here, an additional small heist note here, and three small heist notes here. You can pick up Beautiful Soldier if you want to set up your hug with maybe a haste aura that you then get a free aura in the map, which is a nice thing to have. Obviously, it's going to help you. I didn't want to set up my hug. I didn't want to do any highs, so I skipped it. But it is an option you can do to further optimize the strategy. And the small highest notes is what I recommend dropping first because this right now is 132.3. If you need to skip notes, you can skip those. You can skip this and you can skip the remnants to get it all the way down to 124 tree, meaning it's even easier to set up, even easier to do. But yeah, then we are grabbing the Trial of Glory again for the improved offering, hoping for that gift of the goddess one and three when we find the trial. And we pick up the beast nodes, we pick up big game, we pick up great migration going over the right path because we don't really care about Einheim missions, we are using the scarab. And this one has a chance to give us a year in pairs, which is stacking with the sextant. So what happens here is, let's say you get a Quirky Camille. Instead of one, you're going to find two in your map. And then you have two Quirky Camilles, which now both going to get duplicated when captured. So instead of getting one dupe to two, you now have two dupe to four, which is just massive gains. In the first one, which is why I had to do the second test one, I actually got it somehow tripled. So I had a Quirky Camille spawn on my map, it then got duped twice, and then everybody got duped by Captured, getting me six at a go in one go. And that's why I had a second 100 test run to see if it averages out. And the second one I got even more Quirky Camilles, where I got none of those duped. All of those were single in my map, and then only duped by the Sextant. And this gets us to the final beast node. Hunt for Quirkian. Now there are versions of this guide that recommend grabbing both the Hunt for Phenomus and the Hunt for Krakean. In my experience, why is this one still, there we go, and the Hunt for Krakean both, but I recommend only grabbing the Hunt for Krakean. In my first setup, in my first armament map test, I only had Hunt for Krakean, and I've gotten a similar amount of Phenomal Plague Arachnid and of the Krakean uh, Chimeral. Then on my second test run on the first half, I had bows and I got way more spiders than I've gotten Quirky Camerals. Only once I stopped using the second one, as we can see in game, I've gotten more similar. It was like I had four of these and already ten Phenomal Plague Arachnids, and after I swapped, I gotten a lot more Quirky Camerals. So my recommendation is going to be only the hunt for Krakean and not grabbing the hunt for Phenomus. You're going to save a point and you're, as far as I've seen, going to get more Krakeans. Now, finally, we do have some more spare points. We can use those to grab Shaping the Mountains to have a chance of getting free map crafting options, so either free Essence or maybe free Legion if we want to run more Legions after this. Then we're grabbing, uh, blocking everything except the Smuggler's Dashes. So we're blocking all other nine things we can block. And then finally, if we are running in a T16 map, we can grab Vivid Memory, Remnant of the Past, and Conqueror Conquerors, as well as those Maven Invitation Drop Chance nodes, to get a chance of getting the Elder Slayers, the Formed, the Twisted, or any of the invitations that we might be able to sell as well. But yeah. Now, there is a possibility to run this on a T6, or T10, or T11 map, if T11, uh, T16 is too strong. Obviously, if you run that, you don't want the big nodes. Uh, I mean, you can grab vivid memories, but as you can see here, T14 plus, we don't want these nodes. We don't want these nodes, so we would cut out this part of the tree. 
and we would have spare points. This is really great to start this strategy, but I recommend T16 because it does add up. We also can get fractured items and heist the blueprints and the statues uh, and the deception contracts only sell at 81 plus. So we would also drop heist if we run it at lower tiers, meaning less profit per map. This is why I recommend T16, but it's totally viable to do T11 or do T6 because the trial of glory can starting appear in yellow maps, which is T6. But yeah, that is that. Let's finally take a look at the profit. Now the profit, as mentioned, is truly insane. We are looking at already about 200% return on investment just on consistent drops. And this is like Ferric Lynx, Ferric Wolf, Ferric Frostidian, Crykic Vessel and the Essences. Now you will notice that unlike usual I'm not considering any chaos drop, any currency drops a year. Because we aren't really getting those consistently. Those will be from random altars, going to be from random, random drops. Consistently we're going to get a lot of beasts here and a lot of essences. Now in my first test run I found 32 Ferric Lynx Alpha, 22 Ferric Wolf Alpha, 15 Ferric Fostilian Alpha, 10 Crykic Vessels and essences worth 2.3k chaos. Now keep in mind for those essences we pay 2 chaos per map, we run 100 maps. This is insane. Just the essence alone. 2.3k chaos and this is at 90% stash value. They almost instantly sell at 110-120% based on the, the bulk you have. So this is even more potential again and which is which I love on these strategies is that the amount I'm mentioning here is very likely a minimum you can make. You can very likely make even more than I made in my maps. And then we add the inconsistent on top, we're getting 12 Crikey Camerals, 12 Phenomal Plague Arachnids and 4 Gift of the Goddess in the first run. Now again, this has been truly insane. The 4 Gifts of the Goddess was something that by second test of 100 runs I actually gotten 0. So they are a bit more, more in inconsistent, a bit more flippy. They can happen, but you also can get unlucky. First with the Spawn of the Improved Trials. And then second with getting the one and three gift of the goddess. But yeah, let's take a look here. So with the 20% uh, 20 chaos map cost because Mesa is currently very expensive, we are still making about 18c per map minimum. This is again on average with the beast and the essences. And in a, if we take one minute per map, which you can get with a bit of practice, that's 4.5 divines. This is a 20c invest per map strategy, netting you 4.5 divines. This is insane. But of course, not every build is a streak. Even I on some maps wasn't able to do it in one minute consistently. Some maps took me longer. If you run two minute maps, it looks a bit more reasonable at 2.3 divines. Which again, that is a two minute map, but we are watching the maps. So we are aiming at 1 to 1.5 minutes. At 1.5 minutes, that's a 3 divine strategy. But once you get a build that is really good at this, and you're running this really fast, and get your maps down to 30 second maps, look at this number! This is insane! At 30 seconds maps, this is a consistent profit of 9 divines an hour, with just essences, crykic vessels, and the, uh, and the wolves, the ferric, uh, the ferric fossil, and the ferric wolves, the ferric links. It's insane! This strategy is unethically good. But of course, this is again if you once you get a build that is really, really strong at it. A build that is specialized in a strategy with a strategy that is already pretty good makes it even more insane. Now in my second test run, I have slightly different values, but I'm going to cover them here now because I want to con uh, compare the consistent of the first and the second run. In the second run, I had also heist on my setup. So I had deception contracts, I had rogue markers, I had unusual gem blueprints and I had replica or experimented items blueprints. Now my consistent profit is going to be higher while my inconsistent is going to be lower because I didn't got any gift of the goddess. So we reduced the cost a bit by swapping to a slightly worse map because Mesa is a better layout for rushing, Beach is a bit worse because sometimes it gets a bit more big, a bit more open but it reduced the cost of the map so we made a 20c profit per map. 
then we have almost 300% return on investment already. At 1 minute maps, that's 6.9 divines, just because of Ferric Lynxes, Ferric Wolves, Ferric Faustilian, the Vessel and then the Essences again. And as you notice, Essences, I actually have gotten less value in Essences on this run per map compared to the other run. Yeah. So, it, it does vary a bit, but it is still pretty insane. This one, it was only 1.6k chaos, again, with 2c per map. <laughs> Just ridiculous. But yeah, so assuming we have a 2-minute map, we are looking at 3.4 divines per hour consistently. Then with 1.5 minute per map, we are looking at 4.6 divines an hour. With a 1-minute map, 6.9 divines an hour, and with 0.5 minutes, this is when you truly optimize the build, when you run really fast. Oop, that's the wrong 13.8 divines that is beyond ridiculous now again running 30 30 second minute map it does require a very specified build a very strong build it is not that easily achieved so this is like the dream number we are more looking like at this to the 1.5 but again even at 1.5 4.6 divines an hour that's nothing to scoff at as a minimum profit. That's usually what we expect at consistent and inconsistent. And when we get to that, it gets ridiculous. So my first one, I had first 12 Crikey Camerals, 12 Fenimal Plague Arachnids, and 4 Gift of the Goddess. My second one, I had 14 Crikey Camerals, 20 Fenimal Plague Arachnids, and 0 Gift of the Goddess. So my first one, I had a 20 Divines per hour. Consistent and inconsistent. No notable drops. No seeing exact invitations, no guardian maps, no conqueror maps, no synthesized maps, no fractured items, no any other things, just with beast and essences. I made 20 divines an hour. Let's just think in for a moment. This is something that was, as far as I know, reserved for 5 way farming, for lab running, for boss carries, or any of those hyper specific strategies that utilize a lack of something or a high demand and make crazy prices. But no, we can do it with a minimum investment, like with a low investment strategy, with beast and essences, we can get 20 divines an hour. Now, of course, this means the one minute maps. Let's say you take your two minute per map. At two minute a map, that's still 10 divines an hour. For a strategy that is fairly simple, of course, it has a big downside. You need to remove the beast every now and then from the menagerie. It is fairly rippy beast, but it requires almost no setup. You can take a relaxed approach of two minutes per map, two minute map rushing. That's a very relaxed approach and still 10 divines an hour at 1.5 minutes. That's 13 divines an hour. And at 0.5 minutes, that would be like if you have the ideal build, if you're maximizing this, that is 40 divines an hour. That's just way too unethical. But again, of course, 0.5 minutes, that is a very unrealistic number. That requires a very strong build, a very optimized, very quite hardy playstyle. So with one minute, 20 divines an hour, this is really nothing to complain about. This, even comparing it to my Legion strategy, this is just so much better. And I love Legion. I'm the first one that says, let's do Legion. But this one, Legion can't compete with this. Except, of course, if you get lucky drops like random diff cards or random very powerful fractures. Now, my second run, I've gotten my 14 Quirky Cameos, my 20 Phantom of Plague Arachnids, and no gifts. But despite that, because I got more Quirky Cameos, I made even more than my first one. I thought on the first one I made more, but no, maths checks out. On the second one, on one minute map, I made 21 divines an hour. This means that the first one wasn't a lucky run, despite the gift of the goddess. The second one proved it. You, you can, or hopefully it proved it based on the data my body gathered as well. You can very consistently make 20 divines an hour with this strategy. Again, this is not considering any guardian map. This is not considering the invitation you're going to get every 28 maps if you run exile or eat off rolls. This is just insane. But yeah, of course, again, also here, let me show you. At 2 minutes, 10 divines. At 1.5 minutes, 14 divines. And at 0.5 minutes, 42 divines. A truly, truly insane strategy. But now, 
which is my, actually in this case my own profit like my results that we can see here and here it hasn't even varied that much from the expected profit so in my case here i had my my results that were slightly better because i gotten two fractured items that were worth a bit and i got my invitations and i've gotten uh, an Einha crystal beast memory so this did up to 10 divines that i got on the strategy on top and on the second one i only got six divines worth of other stuff i got a raw divine drop i've gotten what else was it um i've gotten uh here uh elder slayer because of com map completion i gotten three incandescent i've gotten a cortex so this is six divines but yeah, really nothing to scoff at. Sorry, I had to quickly pause. I did a slight error. It only calculated the first part. It didn't consider the highest results. So overall, on my second run, I made, again, almost similar to my first run in profits. With the notable drops, with the essences, with the bees. Really just a really, really great strategy. Now, if we take a look over in PoE stack, because I haven't sold the things yet. I wanted to show them in the video. Going to go in-game in a moment going to reload the maps just to be safe this is 48 divines value for 100 maps in 100 maps i invested like seven divines i made 48 divines it's just truly insane return and this is with here i said everything that is less worth worth less than 20 cares i reduce if i would consider small stuff that's even more divines the biggest money maker crikey camerals incandescent imitation fenomal plague arachnids the frost helion the rogue markers the blueprints, of course, lucky cortex drop, lucky divine drop, the replica, even fully revealed things do add up as well. This strategy is just pure money printing for almost no investment, for almost no complexity. Again, take a look here in game. I got a few essences, I got a few guardian maps. It will stack up the more you run, the bigger your bulk gets. I've gotten a lot of deception contracts. I've gotten a few enchanted armaments and thief trinket blueprints, but more importantly, I got a lot of replica and unusual gem blueprints, even a few that are fully revealed and a few that have some uh, or have a good amount of currency or divination cards rooms, which might sell for an additional few chaos if sold um, properly and if not just making a bulk post. Now again, on the second one, I did got a bit unlucky. I only found two improved trials and only been a dedicated and a tribute. But on the first one, I've gotten six and four of them being a gift of the goddess. So the more you run, the bigger it evens out. And I gotten, as you see, a ton of beasts. Now the currency tab, nothing special here. A few silver coins, a few sextants, a bit of chaos. We actually not con sustaining our chaos. I added 200 chaos at the beginning of the run here for the 100 maps for the 2c map cost for the essence and it only made 50 chaos back so we would need to sell after every 100 runs and get our chaos back in to run more but with just the essence it's almost an instant the beasts do take some time to sell but overall insane strategy and i needed to share this now i know the video was long hopefully it wasn't too long hopefully it was informative but if you still want to farm currency you still have a big goal consider running the strategy it is just that good. All that being said, if I've forgotten anything, if you have any questions, as usual, feel free to message me in the comment section or on my Discord in the designated channel or over DM. I will try to answer as quick as possible. All that being said, have a wonderful day and I see you in the next video.